We have very exciting news and that is the Magic Leap is now phasing out the Magic Leap SDK in favor of OpenXR standards. This means that now you'll be able to use OpenXR industry open standard, which offers cross-platform development across multiple XR devices. I'm also really excited to share today a step-by-step -step process, which includes setting up an OpenXR Unity project for the ML2, setting up a rig and also the controller, adding plane detection, and lastly, we're going to be adding plane classifiers so that we can label each one of the planes that are getting generated. So let's jump into my computer and start working on it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started by clicking on new project in the Unity Hub. Just make sure also that you have 2022.3 LTS and then also select 3D URP. Now let's go into file and then build settings. And this is the first thing that I recommend to do always with these projects for Magic Leap. Just switch it to Android right away. That way we don't have to wait longer if we bring in new assets. Okay, just go ahead and click on remove readme assets and click on proceed. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and remove all the different settings in here because we're gonna be basically creating our own URP setting. We can just go ahead and go and click on create and then rendering and then URP asset with universal render. So once you do that, it's gonna ask you for a name. We can just call it URP in our case. I think that's completely fine. Then normally what I do here is I always uncheck this HDR. If you don't, it's going to have a layer of a darker kind of opacity on top of everything and it's not going to show in mixed reality. I had an issue with that, so just make sure that you always uncheck HDR. And then the last border here under shadows is going to be five. This is just for performance optimizations. And then I think everything else looks okay there. Now go into build settings here and then player settings. And then what we can do is we now need to associate our new rendering pipeline, which is URP. Just go ahead and click on continue. So we can go into window and then package manager, and then just change this to be my assets. Okay, so now I just go ahead and search for Magic Leap and it should show up as soon as you search for that. And then we're gonna be, if you haven't downloaded it, it's just gonna show you to download and then import. So I already downloaded it, so we can now click on import and it's gonna be basically everything that is going to import that looks good to me. So in this case, we can just click on use OpenXR right here. And then it's gonna bring in this tool, which is very useful because it's going to set up basically the entire project with all the settings, with basically everything that it needs to be able to deploy to a device. So you can see here that it's, it's telling us that we need to import the Magic Leap SDK. We need to fix some of these settings. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on apply. Everything got set up correctly. Now go ahead and close this. Now we have OpenXR and this is using the plugin from Unity. And then it has a Magic Leap feature group, which is cool because this is the power of using this you know, open standard with Magic Leap. And then if you go into OpenXR, you're gonna see that there's a lot of features in here available, and also it enable an interaction profile. So I'm going to just rename the scene. It's gonna be Plane Detection Basic. I also want to go ahead and remove the main camera and the global volume because we need to bring in a new rig. So to do that, I'm gonna go into a window and then package manager. And then once you go into package manager, let's go into in project in here instead of my assets. And then you're gonna see that now we have this Magic Leap SDK. Normally you would install this by going in here, tarball, and then, or get URL and basically installing it yourself. But the tool did it for us. So we already have the version 2.0.0 that supports OpenXR. We can also click on samples in here and bring in the rig and inputs. I recommend starting with this, that way you know how everything is set up and if you're more comfortable later on, you can do it yourself manually. And then what I'm gonna do is we can close out of this and then go into our samples. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop the ML rig and the other file that is included in here, I'm gonna show you what it is, is basically the Magic Leap input. This is an input actions file that includes all the mappings to the HMD, the controller, and then also Eyes. Also, if you go to the ML rig, go ahead and change this tracking origin to be set to device. Expand the action assets, and you're gonna see that this is already, you know, set to the Magic Leap input, which is great because that's going to allow us to capture input from the controller and also from the headset. So the next thing that I want to do though is if we go into the main camera here, 
this is what they recommend, but you can also make it lower if you want objects not to clip at that distance. I think the number that they had on the documentation was 0.25. So I'll include a link in the description to be able to read more about it. Go ahead and right click in here and then we're gonna go and create a new object. So it's gonna go ahead and do a cube. All right, so I got my device connected here. Let me make sure that that is correct. And then we can see it right here. All right, so it looks like the project is now getting deployed. I can see the Unity logo. We can also get tracking from our controller. So it looks like that's working. The ray is also getting occluded by the cube. Pretty object, everything you know on the actual object looks good. We're also getting our mixed reality experience. There's not a layer that, you know, it's occluding everything, which would happen if you have the HDR option enabled. So I'm gonna call this good, looks great. Let's go ahead and proceed with the plane detection features. So you can add the AR plane manager, and this is part of AR Foundation, which is why using OpenXR with Magic Leap is so powerful, because a lot of the components that are available in AR Foundation are going to be working with Magic Leap 2, so basically everything is standardized, so which is great. So in here, you can also specify whether you want horizontal or vertical planes. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as everything for now. And then I'm also going to be adding a prefab folder. So right click here under assets and then folder, and then we can just say prefabs. So this folder is basically going to contain a couple different prefabs. In this case, I want to add a plane prefab example. And this came from the samples that I downloaded from the Magic Leap Hub. So if you want to do that and look at that project, you can also do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and double click it. There's a couple of things that we need to do to it. So the first thing, just to keep in mind, this is gonna include an airplane. This is very standard with Air Foundation. And then there's also an airplane mesh visualizer, which is going to basically create the mesh so that we can render and have a mesh render that displays the actual plane and then just drag and drop the plane prefab example. So next what I wanna do is I want to add a folder that is going to allow us to basically log more information. So what I'll do here is I'll drag and drop my learn XR folder that's going to be included in the repo associated with this project. All right, so that logger should be good to go and we should be able to start logging some of that information. So the next thing that I wanna focus on is going to be getting permissions for plane detection. So if we go into scripts or create a folder for scripts, we can start implementing that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new folder. So it's gonna be called scripts. And this one I'm gonna call the plane configuration manager. And we can just add in a script, plane configuration manager. And for this, we can create a new empty game object. And I'm gonna call the empty game object the same way, that way everything is consistent. So we can say plane configuration manager, and then let's go ahead and zero out all the different X, Y, and Z on the position, all the different values. And then we can also associate our plane configuration manager, that way we have it associated with that, and then just drag it and drop it into prefabs. That way we have a component specifically for that. Just to give you a walkthrough, this is gonna be how many are the max results that we're going to be getting when we do a query of planes. We're gonna set it to 100. Also the minimum plane area, so when we're detecting planes, it's gonna be very important. This is gonna be 0.25, so we're dealing with meters, so it's going to be basically a fourth of that. And then this can go lower, I think it could be the minimum, it's about a cap of 0.04. So we'll be playing with that number so that we can detect a smaller planes. Also permission callbacks are important so that when, you know, when we're granting permissions, when permissions are denied, basically we get a callback into some of the methods that we're binding to. And then airplane manager, we're gonna need that permissions granted. And this is basically just a Boolean to determine if they're being granted or not. And also access to the main camera because we're gonna be using it down below. So we're getting the main camera here, the plane manager, we're binding to all of our different permission methods, granted, deny, deny, and don't ask again. Also on this true, we gotta remove those. This is just for, to keep things very clean. 
On a start, we're gonna be making sure that our subsystems load it. So basically making sure that plane detection is available. The subsystems are available before we try to request permissions. You can see here, this is the code that I got from Magic Leap. They basically make sure that the managers are available, the singleton is available, the loader is available, and also the XR plane subsystem is available. If it is available, it's going to try to request permissions and the permission is going to be a spatial mapping. So we should see that as soon as the app basically launches. And then if we hit allow, then it's going to proceed you know, to the callback and it's going to call into the appropriate meta. Then the on permission grant is pretty easy. I'm just logging that to or logger. I'm also enabling play manager. We're also saying the permissions have been granted. On permission denied, we're basically saying that that permission was denied and then also disabling the plane manager. And then on update, we're basically requesting and querying planes. So this is just making sure that everything has been set. Plane manager is enabled and permissions have been granted. And if so, we can basically call the underlying backend system to request planes. So you basically have to form a query this determines you know what the flags are going to be what the semantics are going to be that we're requesting so you can see here that we can say you know give me only planes that are vertical planes horizontal planes that they have all orientations maybe only the ceiling maybe only the floors so it just really depends on the experience that you're building also the bound center the rotation is all based on that information that we're getting from the camera and then the stance basically is going to stance up to 20 meters and then max results a minimum plane area is so set within that query as well so if you go into file and then build settings and then player settings and if you remember we had a setting here under xr plugin management that was designating you know that we were using plane detection there's also a permission that we need to enable here so that it goes into the manifest, the Android manifest file. So right now we don't have any of these settings enabled. So the one that we're gonna need is going to be the spatial mapping. That way it can capture the information from more physical environment. All right, so this is the pop-up that we're gonna get as soon as we deploy the application because we're trying to request permissions for detecting planes. So I'm gonna say deny. I want to show you what happens in the application. We can see that we have the permissions, come that magically permission spatial mapping was denied. And that's because I basically said no to allow that. So let's go ahead and kill the application. And then I'm going to go ahead and launch it one more time. And this time I'm going to allow it. So that way we can start capturing planes. I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and capture. And you can see that now planes are getting detected, right? I can go around my area and then you can see the blue material getting assigned to the different planes. All right guys, so that was pretty fun. So now what I wanna do is I want to add a little more details to each one of the planes. So I'm gonna create a new script and this one is going to be called the plane classification. Basically the plane classifier, we can use classification because it's been used by the system already. So we can just say plane classifier. And then what I'm gonna do though, is I'm going to assign that to the prefab that we had for the planes. Basically as each one of those gets generated, it's going to get some classification information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into ML rig and then double click on our prefab in here. And then we can go ahead and associate this script that we just created. So it's gonna say the plane classifier, it's going to leave there. And then if we collapse everything in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be basically assigning a specific classifier to a text that is going to live under these planes. Now that we have that though, we can go ahead and implement this. So go into the plane classifier. I have this serializable class, which is called a classifier material info. Basically it's going to hold the plane classification. This is so that we can store whether it's going to be a wall, a floor, a ceiling table, and so on. Magic Leap doesn't support all of these different semantics, but they do support some of them. So look at the documentation that I'm pasting below so that you guys know. But the cool thing with this though, 
is because this is a standard and this comes from the airsoft system is uh, as magically provides you with new semantics these are going to work out of the box right you don't have to refactor your code other than this plane classification is now going to be bringing in different planes that are of different types and then i also have material here because i want to assign a different material depending on the classification basically a floor could be maybe a blue color or a brown color maybe if we well in this case we don't have a tree but let's say a ceiling is a white ceiling we want to assign the color white and so on so you can use this object to store that then the plane classifier it's going to basically hold the name of the actual plane classification so this is going to store whether it's going to be the floor the ceiling a table and display that at the center of each one of the planes and then basically the array of all the different classifier materials that we're going to be storing then on the star we're going to be classifying this because at this point we should know what the plane is and basically we go through a case statement here that determines what the plane info text is going to be depending on the classification then at the very end here we're going to be getting the classifier object so that object right here depending on the plane classification that the plane think that it is then we get the mesh render and then we get the and associate the mesh render material with the classifier info material as long as it's set if it's not set then we're gonna basically use whatever material is assigned to the airplane initially and then we're just basically logging the name of the plane and also the classification that was assigned okay so what we're gonna do now is we gotta associate the text mesh pro here to the plane info that way we can display that name of the plane and then i also need to associate all the different plane materials so let me go ahead and drag and drop all of those All right, so it looks like we got all the different play materials assigned. I went through each one of the classifications here and assigned my own material. I want to add an environment interaction manager, which is going to be basically allowing us to shoot on the walls. Here we basically have a force that we're gonna be using when adding a force through the physics. Also, when are we gonna be destroying this? I put it, you know, default of 10 seconds then object to throw prefab that's going to be our ball then the throw action property is going to basically hook into the trigger button on the controller we'll have to do that on the inspector and also a reference to the action based controller that way we know where to the origin position of the ball is going to be and also we're going to be mapping to this perform action that we're going to be linking so it's going to be the trigger button so it's going to be executed when we press the trigger and then on this throw it's going to be removing the action and then the shoot method is just basically going to create a new object and based on the object to throw prefab at the controller position with the quaternion identity and then local scale i'm just going to set it actually this needs to be 0.01 I just wanted to reset it just in case you add a different prefab that is going to be a lot larger. And then we're also going to get the physics here, the rigid body, apply forces, and then destroy the object after that specific time. So we can just easily go here and just drag it and drop it into this property. And then we're going to be adding the reference to the action property. So the easier way to do this is we can just, you know, search for trigger and then we can just set it to this. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video with Magic Leap 2 OpenXR and Plane Detection. I'm really excited to see what you create. And if you have any questions about this video or any other topics as it relates to XR, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified of future videos. Thank you very much, guys.